So you don't know the basics of ISO 27001 and you want to see some practical examples if this is a good fit uh, for your company. So in this video I'll present uh, the basic principles of data security in a company and why an ISMS based on ISO 27001 is the best way to manage uh, such a security. I'll also explain uh, which types of companies can implement this standard and what the main benefits are. So after you watch this video it will be clear to you how to manage cybersecurity in a company and how ISO 27001 can help you do it. And I made this video uh, for beginners who are just uh, starting to learn about the standard so I'll use some very uh, easy to understand language when explaining about the standard. And if you want to learn more from me about ISO 27001 uh, click the subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel. So before you decide if you want to go for this uh, standard you need to learn some basics. So let me start first by telling you what ISO 27001 is not. So this is not a standard only for large companies. This is not a standard only for uh, IT people. Uh, this is not a standard which only focuses on you know, writing policies and procedures and documents. No, uh, the standard is something uh, different. So what is then ISO 27001? This is a leading international cybersecurity standard published by ISO. And ISO is basically an a international body founded by uh, governments around the world which publishes uh, standards that are agreed uh, with, uh, uh, by countries around the world. And the latest uh, version of ISO 27001 was published in uh, 2022 and the next revision, next version of the standard is expected in 2028 or 2029. Now it's interesting that uh, both uh, companies and individuals can get certified against this uh, standard companies by going for the uh, certification audit uh, and uh, individuals going by, uh, for the course and then passing the exam and getting a certificate from the exam. The main principles uh, of ISO 27001, so basically the main goals that you want to achieve with uh, information security are confidentiality, integrity and availability. So let me give you an example of what these three uh, things mean. So let's say that you open a, a bank account so confidentiality means that uh, you want only the bank and probably some government uh, bodies to know about your savings account, no one else. So you don't want someone who is not really uh, authorized to know this uh, information. Second, you want this uh, that the bank actually calculates accurately the amount of your uh, savings account plus the interest. This is the, the integrity of the data. You don't want something to go wrong with this uh, data. And the third is availability. So you want, when you go to the bank to uh, uh, take your money, you want actually the bank to have their systems online so that you actually can access this information that, so that this information is available. So how to achieve these goals? How to protect the information? Let me give you uh, another example. Let's say that you leave uh, your laptop in a car so there is a risk that it will get stolen. So what can you actually do to protect this information on the laptop? There are basically four types of uh, controls or safeguards that can help you decrease these risks uh, related to, to security. So you can uh, apply organizational controls, technological controls, people controls or physical controls. For example, organizational control could be that you write a policy on how to use laptops uh, out of your uh, office and one of the things is that you write that uh, you can actually not leave your uh, laptop in a car. Example of technological controls could be, you know, making the backup, uh, uh, encrypting the disk, uh, using strong passwords, uh, two-factor authentication and so on. People control is, uh, could be that uh, you simply train your employees on what are good practices and what are bad practices when it comes to uh, using your laptop uh, out of your office. Whereas physical control could be that you, let's say, uh, tie your uh, laptop uh, with a lock uh, within your car or that you simply uh, leave your laptop within your trunk so that it's not visible uh, from the outside. As you can see from this uh, simple example, uh, these safeguards are never only IT safeguards because, you know, without people controls or organizational controls, only IT controls would not be enough. And the second point here is that it's never enough to have only one control. So let's say that you have only, uh, let's say, people controls without technological controls. Again, it's not going to be enough, it's not going to work. Now, this was a simple example with one laptop uh, and basically one uh, threat. Now, imagine that you have to manage security in a company with uh, hundreds, uh, hundreds of laptops, uh, I don't know, dozens of uh, servers and various other uh, digital assets. And it becomes very complex uh, and for that purpose you need a system to manage uh, your security. And this is where ISO 27001 is the best. 
It actually presents how to organize an information security management system basically to protect this uh, complex uh, set of uh, uh, digital assets. Now, how to set up this uh, ISMS? So 27001 says that you need to have two elements. Uh, the first one is uh, risk assessment and treatment. This is where you uh, have to find out what the potential problems or risks uh, for the, uh, your data are. And then you have to apply appropriate controls to cover these risks. And ISO 27001 gives you a catalog of 93 controls from which you can actually choose the controls that are the most uh, applicable uh, for your particular risks. Okay, and uh, 27001 goes uh, further and gives you other elements which are important uh, for managing security. For example, how to align your security with your overall business. What are the main roles and uh, responsibilities for security? How to measure if security is actually achieving uh, what you have planned for? Also, uh, how to do the internal audit, uh, so basically to make sure that everyone uh, is doing his or her job. And also, how to involve your uh, top management in uh, the whole security. And because uh, ISO 27001 is so, let's say, flexible, because you can actually choose the controls that are the most uh, uh, applicable to your company, it's actually applicable to any type of a company, any industry or any size of the company. So ranging from, let's say, uh, uh, small companies, uh, uh, IT companies from only a couple of employees to very large, let's say, financial organizations, all of them are actually very, I would say, good for implementing ISO 27001. So as you can see, ISO 27001 puts everything uh, very nicely together. So it gives you a framework for managing security, it gives you a path, it gives you these catalog of uh, safeguards and it also enables your company to get certified and show actually to your uh, customers uh, or other third parties that uh, your company is secure. And by the way, there are already 60,000 companies worldwide certified against uh, this standard. Okay, I hope that uh, ISO 27001 is uh, much clearer now. And if you want to learn more about this standard, you can click here to open a, a free account uh, at Experta. So Experta is an AI-powered uh, knowledge base which will answer any of your questions around uh, this standard. And it will also give you a systematic way to learn uh, about the standard and anything about the implementation, documentation and so on.